Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gamer Tidacom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to be discussing the Zen 2 micro architecture and its family of CPUs through some comments Lisa Sue has made, some other internet leaks, along with some exclusive information that I have been fed. If you're wondering how accurate my information is, it is actually from the same uh, leaker or one of the leakers that told me that we would be seeing Vega 7 NM for gamers. And also the fact that the Ryzen 3000 series of CPUs would indeed support PCIe 4.0, along with some other details of the X570 platform and Ryzen 3000, which has, of course, turned out to be pretty accurate. Of course, though, AMD's plans can change at a dime, but for now, he is very confident in what he's saying. So first things first, let's talk about Lisa Su. In an interview, she was quoted in saying that people have actually noticed that there is additional space on the package. That is the engineering sample CPU that of course was demoed at CES. And she went on to say that, yes, there is additional space on the package and you can guess what maybe we're gonna be doing with that. However, she did not go on to say what the core count would be. And she's just said that historically AMD have liked to increase the core count. We all know the meme. Uh, engineering sample CPU had memory running at 2666 megahertz. Lisa Su was asked, if the core count does increase, will your channel memory be enough to provide the bandwidth across, let's say, 16 CPU cores, 32 threads? She said that they're confident, uh, basically, but she has not divulged any more information and just said you'll have to just wait and watch this space. Now, my source has told me that officially AMD are targeting uh, Ryzen 3000 to support 3200 megahertz. That's something that I uh, released information of way before CES uh, 2019. But whether this is going to be true or whether AMD are going to go any higher than that remains to be seen. Although he's also told me that there are tweaks that AMD have provided into the architecture, which now, of course, we've got some official confirmation for, such as reduced intercore latency, and we see the chiplet there and blah, blah, blah which does tell me that most likely 3200 megahertz should be enough or whatever AMD does finally settle on to provide enough bandwidth across all the processor cores. With that said, we won't really know 100% until we test it with a myriad of different benchmarks really pushing all the CPU cores and really pounding the processor with as many read writes and IO as possible. So whether the CPU starts choking, let's say if you're doing video rendering with X amount of CPU cores while trying to game on another X amount of CPU cores while trying to, let's say, stream on another set of CPU cores and whether it's going to have enough bandwidth, we can only wait and see. However, so far, the early prototypes do appear to be good. My source also told me that the TDP of the Ryzen series of CPUs would mirror what we've seen previously. So we'll see 65, 95, and finally 105 watts. So then, what about PCIe 4.0? I'm going to read out what my source says here. Uh, PCIe 4 topic can be split into two parts, CPU and chipset. AMD have claimed that next-gen Ryzen will support 4.0 and it will remain until pro uh, production. But for the chipset part, it will be the 500 series, most likely the X570 supported only, meaning the 400 and 300 series cannot. So this is why, according to AMD, it is A, down to the motherboard vendors in question to provide a BIOS update to support PCIe 4 on, let's say, an X370 board, but this is also most likely why only one of the slots will support PCIe 4.0. So it is the CPU, um, it is the slot that is directly connected to the CPU and the other slots which are connected through the chipset on the older boards most likely will not support it. What about clock speeds then? Well, AMD are still being very cagey here. In fact, he has said that AMD are being much better about holding information back from their partners compared to previously. In fact, if you remember back to the original Zen CPUs, there were a lot of leaks that were appearing online from benchmarks and so on, but this hasn't really been the case at least as much with Zen 2. He has said that so far, from what he's hearing, AMD have not 
nailed down the final clock speeds of the processors and they are still in engineering sample phase only. Uh, don't forget that from what we're hearing, the CPUs, that is the Ryzen 3000 series, will not launch until some point in the second quarter, possibly the third quarter, but it's looking like the second quarter of this year. So according to him, clock speeds have not been nailed down. It's most likely that they're still trying to tweak and figure out exactly what they can squeeze out of the silicon. You can increase the clock speed, you can increase the core count, and the other major way to improve performance, of course, is IPC. According to several reports, AMD are indeed looking to drastically increase IPC from Zen slash Zen Plus to Zen 2. For those unfamiliar, AMD improved the Zen Plus performance by about 2-3% to at the same clock speed compared to Zen. So they did this by tightening the timings on the cache across the core and also improving the memory controller. We actually tested that in a video and did verify AMD's claims. I'll try to remember to link that in the video description. And according to multiple reports, AMD are actually targeting about 15% IPC gains at a minimum. And indeed, the website Anantech believes that this is true from their independent investigations. And this does closely match to what we've heard from earlier rumors. And this is combined with drastic improvements to floating point performance and so on and so on that we saw at CES and other events. And that was officially confirmed by AMD. As a bit of speculation on my part regarding the clock speeds, AMD have not given any information on the engineering sample that we saw. However, rough estimates can say that the CPU, depending exactly what was going on in a particular second, was consuming between 70 and 80 watts of energy. So what you can extrapolate there is there is room left in the tank, assuming AMD want to continue to ramp that up. But how that actually plays into clock speed and how well TSMC's 7NM process does scale with clock speed hasn't yet to been determined. So then, what if you don't want to buy Ryzen? What if you want to buy Threadripper? Well, from my sources information, it would appear that AMD are targeting a release window for Threadripper 3000 to be in the early part of Q3. They have not given an exact release time frame here, but they've said that early part of Q3, possibly a month or two later at latest, is what AMD are currently targeting. There has been no mention thus far, from what my source has heard anyway, about clock speed or number of processor cores and that type of detail regarding the platforms. So AMD are clearly being a little more cagey here, although it's possible that we might hear more details about that soon. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you have, like the video and definitely subscribe for more content. Unfortunately, I need to make this video a little shorter and I can't cover some other news that's popped up today simply because of time constraints. Uh, I'm still a little jet lagged and I still need to do some unpacking and just, well, you know, what it's like when you get back from a trip. But of course, there will be a lot more content coming up on the channel over the next several days now that I'm back to a more routine schedule. With all of that said, thanks very much for watching and all of your recent support. It's incredibly appreciated and well, bye for now.